So we kind of challenged you. We said, exactly. Brian, you're going to do a room, and it there's going to be color. Yes, yeah, so it's my version of color. I love it. So <laughs> control yourself. <laughs> so I ch well, one of my favorite colors still is blue. Yeah. So I chose uh, our set is from Alti. And uh, they have everything, the carpets and the furniture and the lighting. And I chose this beautiful blue sofa. I almost find this a neutral. Yeah. You know, it's not this really bold color. This can go with anything. This could go with neutrals. It can go with brights, things like this. So I chose a classic sofa in this fine herringbone in blue. Then I chose this great carpet that has blue and wheat colors going through it. Really a great color. It's nice. It looks textured. There's something it about it textured. that has some warmth just because you've got a few different colors layered on top. And for a lot of spaces, especially small spaces, you yeah. don't want the carpet to be too wild a pattern. You want it yeah. sort of to sort of reset, recede in because it's going to be, it's going to define the space a lot as it is. Mm -hmm. So you really want a very open space if you're going to do bold patterned uh, carpets. And then we chose a paint color, which was um, a brick color, a deep brick color from Benjamin Moore yeah. to bring in that beautiful old red, like it's almost like a burnt red. Yeah, you're uh, a wild man because look wild. at what you've done. <laughs> What? You put this beautiful blue sofa and you used color on the wall. Yes. And a lot of people would think if you're going to go with a big piece that's a color, you're probably going to go neutral with the wall. But there's no, nothing wrong with no. it. It works well together. The paint is so fabulous because you can change it. Like that could be yeah. changed to anything. The color we'll see in Sharon, which I absolutely adore, yeah. would look fabulous in here. A gray would look great in here. Uh, a uh, stone color would look in here. Any color would look good. For sure. So even though this is a color, it's sort of a neutral color. For sure. And that's called Boston Brick. Uh, Boston, Boston Brick. Brick by Benjamin Moore. It's oh, beautiful. you know your colors. And then we'd use the wood on the chairs. Mm -hmm. And then this sort of natural saddle color. And uh, the nesting tables are great. I love using nesting tables. You can see these two nesting tables. And I took one out and put it there. Yeah. And what's neat about these, look at the inside. It has a color here. Can you see the blue Oh, see, it's, I could not see that. That's yes. very cool. So it's got this blue um, faux chagrin. Chagrin is a stingray. Okay. The fish stingray, and if you see real chagrin, it's little pieces, and they, and it always has that white in the center. I love chagrin. Chagrin was originally used by the Japanese samurais as armor before metal, oh, wow. because it's so hard, the skin, you can't stick a knife through it. That's amazing. And you have to use like, almost like power knives. And, and a nice little, a nice little uh, detail there. Yes, so, and I love that, and you can do that. If you buy a pair of nesting tables, paint the inside a color. Mm -hmm. You could do silver leaf or gold leaf or paint the inside of a color, and that's about repurposing. Um, and we did a lot of that at Princess Margaret also, where we painted furniture, but I love those little surprises. There's a designer named Christian Liagre, and what he does, I'm gonna show you these lines. Yeah. He paints the inside of, of dresser drawers bright red. Oh, that's awesome. So when you open the drawer, there's like a color inside. It's a little surprise. I've seen people do a whole dresser or, you know, cabinetry right at the front of the house, and everybody's got a different drawer color. That's a good idea. So everybody in the family's got their color, and you always know that is your drawer. That's a cool idea. It's, an, it's a nice little surprise. It is. And then we have the gold leaf for the center of the table with this artistic pattern. You can see how beautiful that is. I love tables like this because the layering. You can put things underneath and over. Yeah. But I love the gold leaf. And then these book prints, which are great, they're all also from LT, and they're prints on Lucite. Nice, which is a, makes it a little, a little bit more contemporary. Exactly. Now, these lamps, I love these lamps, and I love crystal lamps. This is sort of a modern version of crystal lamps. So this is a solid crystal lamp. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to notice is that when you do lamps like this, crystal lamps, this is what's called French wired. Can you see the way the wire just hangs on the outside? Yeah, it's annoying. With some PS. <laughs> a little bit, right? She sounds like one of my clients. <laughs> So, what are we going to yes. do about that? So some people get it and some people hate it. Okay. So hollow glass lamps and things, there's usually a rod down the center, but with solid glass. So what I typically do, if you see this, I just take some tape like that. Oh, see, you're annoyed like me. I and love then I, this. And I tape it like that. Good. And then you don't have it. So, and you can't even really see it through the wire. Because I have crystal -like lamps like this at my house and I... It sort of drove I me like, crazy, so I taped it to the I like back. That. That's good. It's quick and it's easy. Quick and easy. But that's but when you see sometimes you'll look online and you'll see crystal lamps yes. and it'll say French wired. So so you don't get a surprise, know that the wire is gonna be on the Go outside. Go get some scotch tape. Get some tape. Right? Technical.